Let's read. So as we go through this chapter, we already covered the first few verses. I think that what I want to do is just kind of read the last time I did not read the whole chapter. I kind of think that I just want to kind of scroll through and, and, and as I'm reading, try to explain some things because this is a, a, you know, last week I said it was a riddle. I think Jessica might have said it's a mystery. The word mystery is in here. Sometimes a riddle and a mystery is similar. The point is, is that we're, we're given clues in this chapter and we really got to, we got to really come to a conclusion. And you know, what's interesting too is today at Peak Roofing, there was another conversation where somebody said, well, I got one preacher that says this. And overall, I think that conversation went well, well before it was over, it said and done. But, but one preacher says this, another preacher says that, who, who are we supposed to believe? And, and I, I get what you're saying. Because if you've talked to people enough about the Lord, you're going to hear people that, that say that. that. That's probably the 25th time I've heard that. Okay. This one says that. That one says that. And there's a lot of different ways that people can interpret. The only way that you're going to get, but let me just say this. And what I told him is, if there's differing interpretations, somebody's wrong, and it's not God. <laughs> it's not God. God's never wrong. His word is never wrong. I'm a man and I'm fallible. Your favorite preacher's a man and he might get it wrong too. Not intentionally. So when first order of business is you need to get saved, right? Because if you're not, if a person is not saved, then that means the Holy Spirit isn't living in their heart. The word of God says in 1 John 2, 20, that you have an unction. The other translations say an anointing from the Holy One and you know all truth. Does that mean you don't need a teacher? Don't let that lie pass through your head. But what, because God's called teachers as gifts to the body of Christ to help equip them to do the work of the ministry. Okay, but what it does mean is, is that really and truly your main teacher, see, I'm just an underling. You, you, get, you get that. I'm, a, I'm not a hireling, but I'm an underling. I work for the master. Okay, and what we really need is the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, our preacher. We need him to give us understanding and wisdom. But if we're not even saved, we don't even have access to that. Right? right? And so then the next step is, is that once you're saved and the Spirit lives in you, you've got to try to find yourself a preacher that you believe is believable. And is telling you the truth. That still doesn't make it the truth. Because then you also got to try to study to show yourself approved. The workmen that rightly devise the truth will not be ashamed. They were more noble in Berea than those in Thessalonica, for they heard what Paul said, then they went home and they studied the scriptures for themselves. Amen? So the point, that the main point I'm trying to say, you need the help of the Holy Ghost. You need to try to find yourself a good preacher that's going to tell you the truth. And what is, the, what is his motivation? I'm going to tell you right now, you may not believe it. My motivation is to tell the truth about Jesus. Period. Done deal. I'm not interested in it. Sometimes it might seem like it, but I promise you it's not my heart. I'm not interested in trying to make myself look good. I'm not interested. I mean, I hope you like me when the day's over because we all like to be liked. But in the end, if I say something that you didn't like and I thought it was the truth, I, I, I'm not trying to make you love me just because I always say the right thing. I will say this. If I get, get in the flesh and I say something that offends you, then I, I, I guarantee you I didn't intend to do that. You know how I know? Because I don't want to offend I don't want to offend anybody because of my personality. If the word of God offends you, that's between you and Jesus, my friend. Amen. But I can tell you that my heart's desire is not to offend you. Please know that. I don't get a chance to talk to each and every one of you <laughs> in person. But I just want you to know that, right? That I do love you and I'm appreciative of you. Anyway, I didn't mean to get off and all that. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is that this chapter, it's a mystery. And I guarantee you, if you read 10 commentaries, you probably will hear some things that are very similar in nature, but you're also going to hear some things that not everybody is, con is in agreement on, okay? What does that mean? Who's right? Well, you're going to have to choose and decide for that. So I'm just going to go through this and through the years that I have studied both the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, looked at things that are going on in the world, looked at extra biblical information. No, don't, don't apologize to me. And tried to take all that information and assimilate it together. What I believe that the Holy Spirit has led me to, to say, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And so I think maybe we're just going to scroll through and then we'll hit some highlights on the topic. 
Okay? So then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls in the King James Version is called Bibles, came and spoke with me saying, come here, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Now, I know we already talked about the great harlot. We're going to talk about her a little bit more tonight. But look at this. She sits on many waters, but later on we're going to see that she sits on the seven-headed beast. Okay, so what is she sitting on? Is she sitting on waters? Is she sitting on seven-headed beasts? Okay, so some of these things are giving us clues. I mean, because it's not a literal woman. You understand that, right? This chapter right here is full of imagery. Okay, the whole thing is imagery. All right, and, and so we have to try to ascertain what we're actually being told here. So she is a great harlot. Now, I did mention to you once before, and we're going to get more clues as we move forward, that her harlotry is spiritual adultery. Okay, in other words, the Bible speaks of this. And I know I've said it many times, but let's say it again. I call it the spirit of Jezebel. Yes, yeah, she was a literal woman. Spirit of Jezebel. Many times, Proverbs, I said it last time. I don't want to overdo it, but Proverbs 7, 8, and 9 talk about the woman who is the spiritual, who is the adulteress, and the woman known as wisdom in chapter 8. They're both in the city streets crying out to the simple. If you read Proverbs 7, 8, and 9, you're going to get a picture of two women. One is a harlot, and she's trying to seduce people, and she's sitting out on the streets, and she's saying, now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard Marines that used to go to the Philippines. I'm not asking Chari to tell us, but because, you know, she probably does know. Hopefully none of, none of her friends fell into this. But they, I heard that when the Marines would walk through the Philippines, the girls would go, psh, psh, Marine, Marine. Okay, that was the idea. Like, they're in the street, and they're calling for you to come forward. And so, but wisdom does the same. The idea is, is that wisdom and seduction are at the city gates vying for your attention. Each and every day as you walk your journey of life and you go wherever you go and do whatever you do, the enemy, through the spirit of harlotry, the spirit of seduction, whether it be through false religion, false doctrine, false churches, false preachers, certain kinds of music, whatever you, the Hollywood industry, us being blasted and inundated with the message of the world is the spirit of seduction saying come in here wow that's not even right come in here all right and but wisdom is crying out the holy spirit through you through me is also using our mouth as voice pieces and saying hey unto the simple come in here Come in here where you can hear words of life, words of wisdom that will. And this has been going on through the ages. The spirit of seduction, the spirit of wisdom crying out. So here she is. That's what I want you to know. First off, I need you to know this harlot. We're going to see more clues, but she is spiritual adultery. She is false doctrine. She is false religion. She is every lie that will pull man away from God. All right. But she also sits on many waters. With whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. The King James says commits adultery. The point that I want you to see here is that it's specifically telling us kings of the earth. Now listen, we don't have kings today. What do we have? What we might have? No, there's not a king. I don't know. Maybe there's a king of Dubai or something. I don't know. But we do still have some kings. But the point is, this was written at a time when the leaders of nations were kings. Does that make sense? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. They're still leaders of nations. Presidents could be considered kings, leaders of nations, with whom the leaders of the world have committed adultery. What does that mean? That means in some way, shape, or form, now you may not agree with me when it's all said and done, and that's okay, but I'm telling you what the Bible's saying right here is that in some way, shape, or form, false religion, the spirit of seduction, has overwhelmed leaders of nations and has confused them seduce them and cause them to go in a way and lead their people in a way away from God. The question is, did they knowingly do it or did they unknowingly do it? Let me tell you, it's a lot worse than what you think. At least that's what I believe. Now, there's been some leaders that probably were collateral damage and didn't really know what they were into, but there's been others that probably were drinking children's blood. You want to hear it? I'm going to tell it to you. We got enough cameras on there. We didn't miss it. There's probably leaders 
that have through the ages and even still drink the blood of children in a cult ritual sacrifice in order to gain power from demonic spirits in order to move their agenda forward because they work for Satan himself. And listen, it gets even crazier because it's people that you look at them and they'll say Jesus out of one side of their mouth and they're actually worshiping the Antichrist. Okay, that's how crazy it is. Now, whether you believe that or not, that you don't have to live on that. Just hopefully you can at least see what I'm trying to say right now. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. So she's in bed with the world leaders and she's made the earth drunk with her immorality. What does that mean? You know what look, you know what a drunk person looks like? You ever been drunk? Unfortunately, I gotta tell you, I've been drunk. And it ain't, I don't recommend it. Look, young people, y'all are sitting in here tonight. Do not do. Listen, you know what's sad? Listen to this. I'm driving over here. They on, on the radio, New Orleans 870 station, they say some woman in Homer tried to swim across the Intracoastal yesterday. Y'all heard that? She drowned. I knew that woman. I knew that woman because she would bring her. Okay. I knew her from home. But this is crazy. I'm looking at these young people and I'm over here telling them I used to get drunk and then I'm out. Let me tell you why I said that. Because while I was driving, I was like, oh my God. That woman's son was going through some things. And I shared with him a little bit of my testimony. So I'm thinking, like, dude, I'm about to make myself vulnerable. I'm about to tell this kid. Like, he's heading down the wrong path and that Jesus changed my life. And listen, I don't regret it because that was his choice. But I said, look, dude, I'm telling you right now, back when I was 15, 16 years old, I stole my daddy's keys to his car. And me and two dudes that were older than me took off. And I went, ran away to L.A., to California, and blah, blah, blah. Three weeks later, this dude steals his parents' car and runs away to California. So the reason I stopped that was just because I got drunk. And I'm telling y'all, don't go get drunk. Because I ain't getting drunk no more. Because the Lord done convinced me that it only leads to heartache and pain and sorrow. Anyway, that's a crazy story, but that's the kind of stuff that goes on. It happens. All right? They were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. The point that I wanted to try to make with all of that is that when a person is drunk, they don't see right, hear right, act right, talk right. They don't even know where they're going. They done lost their compass. They've lost direction. And, they, and they're, go, they're thrown off. What it's saying is that the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk by her. Who's her? False doctrine, false religion, the spirit of seduction, that which pulls people away from God. There's a, mat a multitude of people, the multitude hang in the valley. Today is the decision of where you, whether you'll give your heart to the Lord. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. The broad is the path that leads to destruction. Most people are not going to come to the Lord. Most people are going to ignore it and like the multitude. And you know what most people think whenever you tell them about Jesus? I'm going to tell you, like, come on, dude, really? The rest of the world's going this way. How y'all going to be right and everybody else is wrong? Come on, man, I got to get my party on or whatever I got to do or whatever they think. Let me tell you, the word of God warns us against that. The majority will think that they're, that they're going in the right direction and they're falling headlong off of a cliff into a precipice of death. And the only hope that they have, Christian, is that God would give you or I an opportunity and that the Holy Spirit would move through us and we'd be able to tell them the truth and that they'd bow their knee to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know sometimes I get dramatic. I did it at Pete Crouppen earlier because I said, I said to her, to I said, but did you ever get born again? I know I'm looking dramatic down here, but the question is, did you ever get born again? Did you ever ask Jesus? Oh, I prayed and prayed. No, that's not what I'm asking you. I don't want to know whether you ever prayed before. I was ministering to a girl a long time ago, a nurse practitioner. I would talk to her about Jesus every day, every day, every day. And then one day I'm like, did you ever pray that prayer we talked about? I prayed with that. That's not what I'm asking you. I know you probably prayed, but did you invite Jesus into your heart? Did you recognize you were a sinner and that you believed that he died for your sin? Would you give God a chance and say, Lord, I don't even know if you're real, but if you are real and you did send your son to die for me, please forgive me and come into my heart and show me. Let me tell you something. If you ever pray that prayer and mean business with God, your life ain't never going to be the same. Amen. Your life will never be the same. I'm not going to tell you that, that you know, you're never going to have a bad day because that would be a lie. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord will never make you walk a bad day by yourself. Amen. If you would just call on his name. Amen. Amen. 
But the rest of the world's drunk with the wine of her immorality. And they're just blindly going headlong into the ditch. They don't even know where they're going. He carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. So she's sitting on the waters. But she's also sitting on this beast. And you can see this beast is full of blasphemous names. So what is a blasphemy? A bla the word really means slander. It means to speak negatively about someone, but specifically about God as deity. Okay, so Satan's always telling lies. In some way, shape, or form, this scarlet beast is interconnected with Satan's plans, trying to move people away, talking bad about God. You know, one time, I'm just going to say, you think, of, one time one of my, my daughters was going through a rough time. I thank God she's not going through that rough time anymore. But, you know, she had this boyfriend. And, uh, you know, one thing about this daughter is, dude, she'll, she'll tell you, she'll tell you the truth. Sometimes you don't know if you want to hear it all, but she'll tell you when, at certain times. And she told me that when her, her, she was in a bar room and her boyfriend made a comment to a group of people. Ha ha, look at my girlfriend. Her daddy's a preacher. You know, I mean, Lord, I have that. I don't want to wish nothing bad on him. But my point is, is that there's a spirit behind that. To him, that was funny. I called him out on it one time. I mean, in, in love. I'm like, dude, yeah, she told me what you said. I mean, you, you thought that was cool? Let me tell you a little bit about me, about where Jesus has brought me. Whether it fell on deaf ears or not, I don't know. Um, but, but I will say this, that I'm just trying to say, this scarlet beast is full of blasphemous names. And I got to tell you that, that the enemy and the spirit of Antichrist is always going to try to talk bad about God and talk bad about God's people. And, and you know, that's what he's been doing through the ages. And you got to be careful and guard your heart that, the end, that you don't let yourself become bitter if you try to minister to someone, right? And they try to talk bad about it. They're going to talk bad about you if you open your mouth for Jesus. Not everybody, but some sooner or later is going to happen. All right, anyway. This beast has seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, and she was adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, and she had a golden cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. So she's just drinking uncleanness, right? On her forehead, now this is, this is part of how we know that there's an inner, this is another clue or a cue to get us in the right to keep us on track. The Lord wants us to see. On her forehead was a name. Written. Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. And of the abominations of the earth. Now I don't really have time right now. I've caught on it many a time. But I don't have time to really exhaust. And say all the things that should be said about this statement. But let me just say this. For the longest time I would read the Bible. And when I got to the Tower of Babel. I did not really know what to think about. I mean, if you get anybody, raise your hand real quick if you've read the story of the Tower of Babel. Okay. If you read the story of the Tower of Babel and you first read it, when you should have come to the conclusion, you should have been like, I'm so confused. And you probably just passed it. Because it's like, they say, come, let us make a city. Let us build ourselves a tower. Let us bake bricks and build ourselves a tower that reaches into the heavens. Now, if a person is reading that. And they don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about this world spiritually that they live on. They read that and they think to themselves, that is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. And so God went down there and confused their languages. So are you saying that God was concerned? Like people that don't believe in God or the Bible would, would scoff at that probably. Like, dude, really? You want me to believe Jesus? Like, I can remember that time I was at the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival and I was handing out tracts and I tried to tell that dude about the Lord. I'm like, man... I felt like the Lord just wanted me to let you know how much Jesus loves you. Jesus, really? My mom was telling me about the Easter Bunny and Santa. Like, he was scoffing. And I'm like, well, you can make fun. It's okay. You're not upsetting me. But I'm just here to tell you, even though you're making fun of him and putting him in the same boat as Easter and Santa, or the Easter Bunny and Santa, he still loves you. He still loves you and he still died for you. And I hope that one day you get to the place where you're willing to call on his name. But the point right here is this, is that if somebody was reading the story of the Tower of Babel, they would say, you people believe that? So there was these ancient people baking bricks and trying to build a tower in the heaven, and God was concerned about that, and he went down there and confused their language. He said, look, when you start to do the study, let me just give you one example. You Google when you get home, pyramids in South America and skeletal remains. There's one pyramid down there that sounded, from what I remember, I'm sure from hit 70,000 skeletal remains. So now it all becomes clear. Now this is an archaeological find on earth 
at a pyramid that is in South America where there's human, obvious human sacrifice. We already know the Mayan Indians were sacrificing human beings. Well, who do you think they're doing that for? They're doing that for the devil. They were doing that for the Tower of Babel. This wasn't like some linear tower going to reach into heaven. No, this is a cult worship of the worst kind. And it starts at the Tower of Babel. And we hear about it at the end of the book of Revelation. And it's been going on through the ages. And if you do any research of your own mystery religion, mystery religion, they were doing it in Canaan. They were doing it in Egypt. They were doing it in Babylon. They do it in India. They do it in China. It's all interconnected to illumination and to being their little light coming on as they give their heart to Satan. That's, that's part of, they're not going to tell you that, but that song, Blinded by the Light, that's part of that. They swear that whenever they see the light, that they get blinded. And they're like, oh, you know, Danielle was like, well, Paul got blinded. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was blinded, but they were just copying and counterfeiting. The enemy's always counterfeiting, all right? Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. I need you to understand that this spirit has been on the earth way before we get to Revelation 17 and 18. It's been on the earth. It's been causing confusion. It's been causing deception. And it's a mystery because it's hidden. You see, the, Jesus said, look at this. Jesus said, get on the rooftop and shout what I tell you. Right? He said, when I tell you in secret, go tell it in the street. All right? Because he wants the truth proclaimed. But what mystery religion does is it hides in darkness. It doesn't want everybody to know. Because you go, I'm just saying, like, let's just pretend. Maybe you don't believe this, but let's pretend that, uh, what's his name? Not Kanye West. The hip dude. What's that one that's married to? Jay-Z. Let's pretend Jay-Z really is an alien. I know some of y'all probably don't believe that. But let's just pretend for a second he is and that that's what he's doing with all the weird signs. All right. And he is, you know, but if you really believed it, let's, let's just, and let's also pretend you listen to Jay-Z. Right? But if you, and it, but if you really, if you got saved and you really believed that he was in the Illuminati and that he really was doing all that weird devil worship kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, let me just say this because I'm not going to put it by my eye because I don't want a screenshot to come up and then say this preacher is in the Illuminati. When they do this, though, look, when they do this, by the way, and they stick their eye in it, you know what that is? That's the all-seeing eye of Horus. It's interconnected to the Tower of Babel. It's inter this is the pyramid. This is the capstone that goes on. This is the spirit of a one-world religion. This, is, this isn't the Bible, dude. And it's, all, it's on your dollar bill. And, and they're over there doing it in their concerts. This is not accidental. This isn't fake. This stuff is real. It's a real spirit that's seducing the world. It's all in their, up in the front of their eyes. All the signs are there. And as a matter of fact, they read the Bible more than you did. Uh, who's they? The occult. They read the Bible more than you do to find out what God hates so they can create magic to defy God, to blaspheme God, so why they can get power from demonic spirits to forge forward Satan's plan for a new world order. And so that's what they do. They learn the Bible better than you do so that they can cheat on God and make God angry and blaspheme his name. So let me just say this. If you believed in God and you believed that there was some of that really going on and it was real, would you keep listening to it? Does he have... Does Jay-Z have anything to tell you that you really need to hear, my friend? Oh, if you're one of them, maybe. Oh, I just like, the, I don't even listen to the words, man. I just like, I like the bump of the beat, baby. You know, whatever. The words are getting in there. And it's a message that is not of God. Okay? I don't even know none of Jay-Z's. And the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman. She was also drunk. So the inhabitants of the earth were drunk with her immorality. She's drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. Now, you know, the King James says admired. I admired, you know. So it's like, what are you, what are you admiring this harlot for, John? That's weird. The idea is it's a spectacle. When you look at it in the Greek, it's a spectacle. It's like, it's almost like theatrical. It's like, oh my God, it's got his attention. And he's like, 
I'm just imagining when I get into some of these pictures that I show you of the Catholic Church later on and show you some of these things and how they interconnected this story. I'm just imagining if what he's seeing, because the Catholic Church wasn't in existence yet. They didn't have it until 300 AD. John wrote Revelation in AD 95. I'm just imagining if when he sees this, he understands that she is disguised in religion and that the whole world has been placed under a spell. And I'm not trying to say this is the cat, just only the Catholic Church. This is every. She's the mother of all this. She just, like I told you last week, she's spitting out all over the place. But what he's, what, I'm wondering if the reason that he, I admired it. I wondered. I marveled because I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe that this thing caused the whole world to get drunk, and they were all. It was all being done under the disguise of religion. Maybe that's it. I can't prove it, but it makes sense. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. Now, we're going to break that down a little bit more. I'm going to hustle up and get to my slides here in a second. But I do want to, you know, some of y'all might think that I really like dissect and critique the scriptures, you know, be critical with the scriptures way too much, but I don't think you can ever do that enough. Some of you might catch this, some of you might not, but maybe next year if we teach it again, you'll understand it better then. When I see this, it makes me ask some questions, okay? The beast you saw was and is not, and is about to come up out of the abyss. Now, it's not that hard to figure out what it's saying, at least in my opinion. It was, so he was alive. It is not, so there's a death. And that he's coming up again. So he's going to do it again. So many people teach that the, that the empire of the Antichrist dies and comes back up. And to some extent, there's a level of truth to that, maybe with the whole Roman thing going on. But many people, and we'll look at Revelation 13 later, also say, no, the Antichrist is going to have a full resurrection. Okay, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all it's not going to be a real one. I'm calling it a foe, meaning a trick, meaning a fake, right? But could it be a clone? I don't know. I don't we could there's all kind of speculation we can throw out there. But what I get out of the scripture and we'll look later at Revelation 13 to make the point is that the antichrist is going to have a head wound, die, and a faux resurrection of some sort, whether it was a clone which a clone would be perfect. I don't mean to get weird on you. I'm just trying to say. I know I've said this before, but a clone would be perfect because it's probably one of the greatest affronts to God's creation, right? When man now takes a cell and tries to create his own human. Yeah. If God created the first man, Adam, and breathed life, his life-giving breath into Adam and made him a living soul, what is a clone that's made by man? Does he have a soul? I kind of venture to say he doesn't. So now you have an empty physical vessel I'm just trying to say demon spirits are always looking for a body to inhabit. Unlike angels, fallen angels, I'm not saying that they can't. That's really where I was getting at with this scripture. So for some of you Bible students, I wanted to point out that, you know, when we look at this, he it says it's about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. There's a lot. So who, who's about to come out of the abyss? You're trying to say that the, the beast or the antichrist? is going to come up out of the abyss? Are human beings in the abyss? No, human beings themselves are not in the abyss. Let me tell you what are in the abyss, I believe, right now. Some fallen angels. I believe that there's one down there for sure that we know of. His name is Apollyon. Okay. And then there's multiple demon spirits. Demon spirits, that that's really where they live. So really what I'm trying to get at is, is that I always have believed, and I'm not telling you that I'm shifting gears on this, I believe that there was... That Judas was literally possessed by Satan. Because it says, I do believe that, but at the same time, sometimes I question. And I'm, I'm not trying to change my theology on you, I'm just trying to get you to think with me. First of all, if you do the study like I have in the Greek, fallen angels transmorph, transmute, change shape, they're shapeshifters. They can make themselves look like a human being. Demon spirits, it's very obviously, used to be the Nephilim. They're released disembodied spirits, and they're looking for a body to live in. That does make a difference. That doesn't mean I'm not trying to say that a fallen angel or that Satan came. It does say that Jew, that Satan entered Judas, right? It says right. I know that. I've read it multiple times. I've preached on it. I get that. But could it be, I'm just asking you a question to think about. It. Could it be Satan entered Judas by proxy of a demon spirit? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I believe that. 
And because I will say that Satan ain't in the abyss right now. Okay. So what I am trying to say, though, is that the idea here is that Antichrist dies, anti and then Antichrist has a full resurrection, and that he comes up out of the abyss because he's infilled with a demon spirit. That's just, I just wanted to point that out. You know, I don't need you to necessarily completely agree with me. I'm just trying to make a point that that is a way that it could be interpreted and seen. All right. And because all of, I am trying to make a point that if Satan's going to directly possess Antichrist, Satan is not in the abyss right now. How do you know? Because the scripture tells me. Amen. Where you been? To and fro, up and down. The devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He will be in the abyss for a thousand years during the millennial reign of Christ, but he ain't there yet. All right. Whose name has not been written in the book of life. These people. So he's going to go to destruction, the, the Antichrist. Those who dwell on the earth whose name have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will wonder. They're going to wonder in a different way when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. Aaron brought it out before, or at least in conversations with me, I brought it out. Antichrist is going to be given power by God. When it says he gives, that he's given a crown, he's going to be given power. And Revelation 13 also says he's going to be able to call fire down from heaven, the false prophet, under the power of the dragon. And the whole world, whose name is not written in the, found, in the book of life from the foundation of the earth, is going to wonder with a different kind of admiration. And they're going to believe that he is the one, and they are going to give in to this system. And they're already drunk with them. See, I've talked to many a Christian that say, oh, no, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give in to that. Uh, I'm going to, no, no, no. And look, they, and I'm not trying to be rude because, look, if it ain't for the grace of God, I'll fall more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I realize that. It ain't none of that. <laughs> don't ever, don't be looking over here at me, you know, help, Lord. And so I'm not saying it's cocky, but what I am going to say is this. He couldn't even live for Jesus when that, during the time of grace. How are you going to live for the Lord when the great trip, if you're still here, or right now in Syria? You couldn't even live for the Lord in America. How are you going to live for the Lord in Syria? Oh, because all of a sudden you're going to realize that you're going to wake up. No, I don't know if it's always going to happen like that, my friend. We need to get our hearts right now, right? right? All right. Amen. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. That's an interesting thing. We'll look at it in a moment. But, um, but what I do want to know is, what I do want to say is you can't just ignore that. It's saying seven mountains. It's saying she sits on the waters. <coughs> she, the seven heads that she sits on are also seven mountains, but they're also seven kings. And then it describes the kings. Five have fallen. One is, so that means five kings or kingdoms. Right? You do understand that. That, it, that, it, that a king is just a representative of a kingdom. Right? And so five kingdoms, that's how I'm interpreting this, five kingdoms have already fallen. One is currently in existence. That was Rome. That's whenever John wrote it. One has not yet come. So there's one that will come in the future. When he comes, he must remain a little while. The beast, which was and is not, that's Antichrist, his, his, his himself also an eight and is one of the seven. And he goes to destruction. So out of the seven, I believe out of the seven, the one that will come in the future, Antichrist gains his empire from that, and he now is the eighth. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received. So here it is. It's interpreted for us. The ten horns are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. So he's saying this during the Roman Empire. And we have information from Daniel that we've already covered in detail that tells us connects us in some way, shape, or form to the Roman Empire. Let me just say this while we're talking about Rome. I'm going to show you some pictures. We're going to close out pretty quick once I get to the pictures. And I'm going to make the point about the seven hills and about Rome being on, having seven hills. I'm going to show you pictures of people dressed in scarlet and purple. And it's things you've already seen. I'm going to show you pictures of people with golden cups. And it's just so obvious that there's some interconnection between this, these pictures that I'm going to show you and this right here. Now, there's a lot that I could spin here and talk about. But what I want, one of the things that I've learned through the years of what I've tried to learn about what the other side does only so that I can understand these things better is that, again, I told you they read the scripture. I hate to tell you that most of the ones that are really, you know what was also really the nice side? 
And I told him that we brought our old Jehovah's Witness to him, and I didn't get a chance to pick his brain about it. But out of nowhere, before the old man came back, he said, because I started talking about Jesus, specifically, right? And talking about the Lord. And he said, man, you caught my attention when you said that about no wings. Yeah. He said, in order for black magic to be performed, oh. the sunlight cannot shine for three days. And so I never did get to ask him why I'm not worried about all that. I just got to let you know, I did tell Robert one day we will bust some bricks out of this place and put some windows. But today doesn't have to be that day. We ain't doing no black magic up in here. We got the Holy Spirit up in here. But I do still want to pick that dude's brain to know, what the, how you know that, dude? Like, anyway. So, but, and it, but he talked about, he told me about a website that talks about Jesus. He, I said, I don't know what you believe. He said, I don't know. I believe in the Lord. But maybe he's got some kind of, maybe I can learn something from him. You never know. We'll see. All right. But they receive authority. So we're talking about the ten horns and that they're the seventh, that they haven't been yet, but they're a future kingdom. They're going to receive authority as kings with the beast for an hour. Maybe I shouldn't have told you. Is that freak y'all out? Good. Huh? Y'all are strong enough, right? Y'all are strong enough Christians. Y'all know you're on a spiritual warfare. Y'all don't quit coming to my church. Come on. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. You see that? That future kingdom that's coming of these ten kingdoms that will be united. I'm just used throwing this stuff out there just to give you a picture in your brain. I'm not trying to say it's that the United Nations, something like that. These ten, the ten of them that are in existence come together and say, make a superpower and say, we're going to give our power and authority to the beast. These will wage war against the lamb and the lamb will overcome them. Now, I personally believe that when this war is waged, it's going to be at the Battle of Armageddon, like we've already gone through when we talked about the bowls of the vials and how the great Euphrates River is going to dry up so that the armies of the east could come forward because God is like calling them and telling them to come on because he's preparing for this great day. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those who are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. Amen. He said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people. So now we get an interpretation of the waters. It says she sat on the waters, but she also sat on this beast. So what I need you to know, now we're learning a little bit more. We're learning that the harlot, she, she's connected to false religion. We know that because she's Mystery Babylon. She's got that written on her forehead. Did y'all notice that? That kind of hit me earlier, too. Like, we've got so many things written on people's foreheads. The 144,000 have been sealed. The mark of the beast is on people's forehead. The harlot just straight up wears it. My name is Mystery Babylon. I'm the great harlot, right? And, but anyway, she sits, the waters that she sits are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. I just wanted you to see that. She's, she's sitting over them, and she has influence on them, and, and, she, and, and she's, she's got them drunk, right? We've already learned that. And the ten horns which you saw, and the beast, these will hate the harlot and make her desolate in that. So there's coming a time, listen to me, there's coming a time when Antichrist, okay, whether we see it for a minute, whether we, whatever, whether we go home with the Lord, whether this is later on in the, whatever your position, I'm just trying to tell you, whenever this happens, there's going to be a day when the Antichrist is going to rise up and he's going to make a place for himself in the temple of God and he's going to de demand to be worshipped as God. No more will Satan be okay with people going to Mardi Gras parades and throwing their hands up in the air like this and saying, throw me something, mister. And then you got this float coming by, and they got a devil's head. And if you take, get stand towards the back, of, and you take a picture, everybody's got their hand, hands raised, and they worship in the devil. Okay, no more does he have to play that trickery, or will he play that trick? No more will he allow you to worship Buddha by proxy of stealing God's glories. And in his way, he says, oh, I got a little bit for myself. No more will he allow you to worship Allah or Krishna or whatever, or another fake Jesus somewhere. No, he's going to say, kill her, destroy her, because I demand to be worshipped, and you will worship me. Just like Nebuchadnezzar said in the book of Daniel, he built a statue that had all them sixes in it, 
And then there were six musical instruments. And he said, when you hear the dulcimer and the harp and the flutes and all this stuff play, bow down and worship the golden image that's got all these sixes numbers in it. And if you don't, we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. Though to the inhabitants of the earth that are on the earth at that point in time, when they see this, they are going to be demanded, just like the three Hebrew boys, to bow or to die. Because he's going to say, no more. No more of this fakery. You're either going to bow to me and worship me, or you're going to die. And that's what's going to happen. That's what it means there. They're going to kill him. The kings of the earth, those that are in power at that time, Satan with the power of the dragon, will say, kill her, eat up her flesh, burn her up with fire. You know what's weird is, is that dogs ate Jezebel. You know, y'all remember that story? The dogs ate Jezebel and licked up her blood off the street. Is that not crazy? The literal Jezebel, under the leadership of prophet Elijah, when she died, dogs ate, and look at this, they will, and they, she will be desolate, she will be left naked, and will eat her flesh. That, and that, that's just, I just, it just hit me. That's the first time I realized that. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. The woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now I want you to see that. I want you to see the city. I want to mention something real quick. I'm about to move through these slides quick. I promise you I'm not going to keep you much longer. I promise. But I want you to see the city. Now, I want you to tell you, I'm about to show you some pictures of Rome, but I'm telling you, the city is not Rome. And I'm going to prove it to you because the last slide I have is going to tell you the name of the city. It's Babylon, the great city. Now, i got to tell you that it's, I, do, I do not believe that it's a geographical, physical location. I believe mystery Babylon is what we've already said it was. It's the spirit of Jezebel. It's the spirit of Babylon. It's the spirit of Antichrist that has been on the earth. It's a spiritual city that the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk by her and they, they've been living in this city, if you will, and have been con have been lied to by this city, okay? All right, let's see here. Let's see if we can find this. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna try to move through. So the first thing I wanted you to see was in verse eight, how, and we already made this point, the beast was, is not, and shall ascend. Now, real quick, I wanted to compare this because I thought this was interesting. I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive. You see the interconnection? How it's talking, it's a faux resurrection. You see, you see the beast is going to try to counterfeit what Jesus did. So, he was, and is not, and shall ascend. All right. So, the next thing I wanted you to see is if we read Revelation 13, verses 1 through 4, then we're going to see how this, I'm going to just go ahead and put it in the King James for you. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Sound familiar? This is four chapters earlier. Upon his horns, ten crowns. Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now, this is interesting. I don't have time to really break this down. But when we went through Daniel, we get this out of Daniel. I don't have time to turn there. Daniel chapter 7. That's how we know that this beast, which I'm about to show you, has to do with those previous kingdoms. I'm not just making this stuff up. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's coming out of the Bible. Like, the, Daniel said there was a kingdom and it looked like a leopard. Daniel said there was a kingdom and it looked like a bear. Daniel said there was a kingdom and it looked like a lion. Here we go. Bear, lion, leopard. All right. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. That's Satan. And the beast, again, is the Antichrist. Just like the Father sent us Jesus, Satan plans to send the world Antichrist. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power. See, that's what it means which gave power to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now listen, I hope that it starts to make a little bit of sense when I talk to you about the, de the deception and the trickery and the wiles of Satan and how he's like, he's really, one of the things I notice, I love my dog so much, but you know what I notice is that the more scraps I give that dog, it ain't never enough, dude. The belly is never full. Like, and I'm just like, I get in your kennel, I'm done. Okay, because you can't, you get, 
you're getting overweight. You gotta, you can't even jump on the bed. Okay, you, some people are like she shouldn't be jumping on the bed. But, yeah. <laughs> but but what I but what I'm trying to say is what what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say <laughs> he ain't never gonna be happy. <laughs> the the beat, the dragon is never gonna be happy. Oh, what I was talking about was his trickery, his devices, his lies. How right now he's willing if somebody goes over there and gets a little Buddha. He's willing if somebody goes over here and gets a little something. You know, I would, you may not agree with me, and you don't have to agree with me. I'm just telling you me. It's become very clear to me that back whenever I was living in the 80s and I was singing, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, I don't promote this. I'm just telling you what I used to sing. And most people didn't even like this band, but whatever. I was out there singing the anthem. I'm on a highway to hell. I'm on a highway to hell. No stop lines, no speed limits. And my friends are going to be there too. I'm on a highway to hell. <laughs> really? You think there's going to be a party down there? You think you're going to be smoking a bong and everybody's going to be, oh yeah, man, Satan's going to make me in charge. Dude, you're an idiot. Satan is going to chew you up just like the dogs ate Jezebel and licked her blood. Just like this harlot's going to be ruined. You are going to be tormented. And But in a way, even though I didn't know it, as I was singing that song, Satan was like <laughs> licking his chops, hoping that I really was going to remain on a highway to hell. I believe that. I know that might sound crazy to some of y'all, but I believe that. You know, running with the devil. You know, all these other ones. All right, that's good enough. Let's keep that. All right, so that's what I wanted you to see. The mortal head wound that he was dead, he's alive. You know, he died and now he's back alive. So here's the here's the mind which has wisdom. Seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sits. All right. I wanted you to see this. So this is what is this? This is Rome. You probably can't see it. So that's why I did this for you, because I wanted you to be able to see it. This is saying, the, and I may be pronouncing this wrong. Quirinal Hill, Viminal Hill, Esquiline Hill, Capitoline Hill, Palatine Hill, Saelian Hill, Aventine Hill. Okay, you know what's weird to me? Like, when I start thinking about the occult and how they do stuff, and I told you that they read the Bible more than most Christians, you know what's really something? What's really something is, is that the book of Revelation was already written in circulation for at least 200 years when the Catholic Church came into existence. Okay. Before, that, that means, look, the Vatican right here. And that, now, you got to go back and double check this to see if it's real. I've looked at it before. I believe it's real. I've researched it. I didn't double research again. I did it about eight years ago. I felt confident enough to put this on here. But what I want you to know is, you see the Vatican up there? Again, I don't believe, but, I, but let me just say this real quick. I mentioned to you about Jesuitism. I mentioned to you about the Black Pope. I've, I said this last week because I want you to understand, when you're looking at the Catholic Church, there's so much mystery behind that, things that we don't even aren't aware of. You want to you want to watch a movie that's pretty entertaining? I think. I mean, look, dude, I ain't scared of y'all watching some movie. Watch the movie. What was it called? <laughs> uh, with Tom Hanks. I know what I'm talking about. Mission. Huh? No. I don't know. Not the one with Jesus Christ. Uh, it was. Huh? Da Vinci Code. Yes, Da Vinci Code. That right there. That movie. Now it's not spelling it out for you completely, but that movie is how saying that the Catholic Church was hijacked by the mystery religions, like even Masons, and how it crept in, and that now it's all corrupt. I don't believe that that's the way the story goes. That's how Hollywood's going to tell it. But it's, what it's telling you is that there's mystery. And listen, when you look at the Black Pope, you can Google that when you get home. Black Pope, the Jesuit, the, the Jesuit general. There's a real guy that's called the Jesuit general. He's called the Black Pope. There's one right now. Okay, what's really crazy, though, is that the Pope today is the first Jesuit priest that became Pope. That's another story for another time. But there's a black Pope. It's not, it's not talking about the color of his skin. It's, he wears black clothes. And he's called the Jesuit General. And then go read the Jesuit Fourth Vow. That's going to be weird enough for you. That'll keep you busy. For a while. But then what you need to understand is that Jesuitism has to do, they call themselves that they're taking the world back for a Christ. But you do understand, oh, I know, I'm probably going to, people are going to hate me after this. You do understand that the word Christ means anointed one and that not everybody believes Jesus was the Christ. And that people that are in new age are waiting for the avatar to return. 
The Muslims are waiting for the Mahdi to return. The Jews are still waiting for their Christ to return. All these people are still waiting. They don't believe Jesus was the Christ. And there's going to be one that comes before Jesus comes. And he's going to call fire down from heaven. And what I'm trying to tell you is that Jesuitism reaches out to the, to the most. These people that go to these Jesuit schools like Georgetown is one of them. But not just Jesuit schools like Ivy League colleges. These Jesuit people are not just priests that walk up in their frock and say, hey, would you like to be a Jesuit priest? No, dude. They're dressed like normal folk. They're the most powerful people in the world. And they got bank accounts a mile long. And they, they come to young people before they're ever going to be senators. And they come to people before they're ever going to be governors. And through the whole process of getting them to buy in, they creep themselves behind pulpits. You can read this. All you got to do is go, and I believe it. And this is the interconnection. The weird thing, though, is what I'm trying to tell you. Catholicism didn't come into existence until 300 AD. What is your point, Matt? My point is, chronologically speaking, this book was already written where the harlot's dressed in scarlet. She's dressed in purple, and she's got a golden cup, and she's got all these precious stones. So my question is, She's dressed in purple. She's dressed in scarlet. She's got a golden cup. Why in the world, if they knew that, would they do that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They already knew. It's like they did it on purpose. Am I, am I making too big of a big deal here? I don't think I am. Why would they do that? If they already read the book before the Catholic Church was in existence, why would they dress themselves in purple and scarlet? And why would they have this cup that they hold to their head in such holiness? Why would they do that? you got to figure that out for yourself, my friend. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the picture don't lie. The pictures don't lie. There's something going on on this earth. And I know I'm not supposed to talk about it, but we're supposed to talk about it. Because if this is the reason why we got to talk about it. And this is when I go to the jailhouse and I say, dude, I bet you you listen, to, you know, you believe that Illuminati stuff. Why you ain't believing in Jesus? Oh, yeah, man, them do so this, so to the devil. I'm like, all right, well, why? Why did they sell them their souls to the devil? Why are they going through all this trouble to do all this stuff and get all this power? If you believe it's true, what is the deal? What's the end game? Oh man, they're looking for power and riches. Okay, but why are the people behind the scenes that have all the money so concerned about them doing what they want them to do and make all these stupid satanic signs and all this other stuff? I wish I had the video that I could show you. I'll let some of y'all borrow it in the past. Do what you want with this Jimmy Page, a self-professing satanic Bought Aleister Crowley's house, wrote Stay Away to Heaven in that house. I had a video of him on They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. And the dude's telling you, look what he's doing. He's got his electric guitar, he's got a bow in his hand. Bang, he's hitting it. Putting the wand towards the north. Bang! Putting it toward whatever. I don't know if that's the north. North, <laughs> south, whatever. East, west. Casting a spell. This, this, this guy is self-professed. It ain't no like secret. It ain't no like question. Well, Jay-Z may not be because he never said he loved the devil. I don't know if he did or not. Jimmy Page straight up tell you he's a Satanist. All right. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, dude, this stuff is going on. So why? If it's real. See, your brain might be like, oh, yeah, they just want a little money. Why would people pay him money to do this? Unless... The Bible's real. Unless there really is a beast. Unless there really is a, a harlot dressed in scarlet. Unless there really is satanic deception. Unless there really is mystery religion. Unless there really is the world being made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Unless there really is a plan to bring the world under a new world order. Either that or it doesn't make any sense. So when you start to see all of these things. It becomes obvious to me. All right, there are seven, five are fallen, one is, the other is not yet come. I already kind of explained some of this to you. The eighth is of the seven. We talked about this last time, the Bible nations against God. We talked about the beginnings of the beast, right? So look, what we say five has fallen. Here you go, real quick. Egypt fell as an empire. Assyria fell as an empire. Babylon fell as an empire. Persia fell as an empire, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is, is that Greece, 
fell as an empire. By the time John wrote the book of Revelation, these five kingdoms had already fallen. Five are fallen. One is. When John wrote it, Rome was the empire in existence, right? So does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Five are fallen. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece had already fallen. Rome was, one is yet to come. Which one? The ten horn kingdom. We learn from Daniel that it comes from Rome. Is it, is it the secret Babylonian city that's also known as Rome because it's built on seven hills and that it's not really a geographical location, it's more of a spiritual city that has the Vatican hoodoo behind it? You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? I hope you're following me. Hopefully. I know some of y'all are here. All right. That's the seven. This, these kingdoms, the final move is the Antichrist, and the eighth comes from the seven. All right? So that's the eighth right there. Revelation 17, 12 through 18. I'm not going to read it. I want to get you out of here, get you home. But verse 18 said, about the city. I brought you forward. I fast forward into chapter 18. We'll cover that the next time. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment. This means the merchants of the world, the rich folk, all them people that have been getting rich off of, and like, dude, credit markets, and oh man, I wish we had time. See, let me just say this. This Babylonian city, this beast system in my mind, this thing is spiritual, the harlot, governmental, the beast, and financial. And guess what? The financial stuff is already here. It's been here. You need to go do your homework on the Rothschild family, the Rockefeller family, how Maya Rothschild started off as a jeweler holding everybody's gold, started writing certificates for the gold, started distributing more certificates than there was gold, created the credit system, already putting people into debt. How many people have ever been a debt slave? Don't be a debt slave. Start listening to Dave Ramsey. Let him help you get free because you don't want to be a slave to the debt system. All right? And... Part of the problem with that is usually not that we don't make enough, but we spend too much. At least that was my story. All right. But thank God I don't have to live there anymore. Please help me not to go back home. Because I do like this thing going that way. That great city, Babylon, that mighty city. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you for your word, Lord. Your word, as we understand it and begin to know it better, it gives us wisdom and understanding, Lord, as we walk this earth. It makes things more clear to us to know that we're so grateful that you revealed your heart to us and that, we're, that we have the opportunity to serve you. Maybe somebody watching tonight on video or somebody in here tonight, you would say, you know what, I've never been born again like you were talking about. But I feel like the more I hear some people talking to me that this just might be true. If that's you right now in your heart, if you're watching, if you're sitting here, Say it. Say to Jesus. Say, Lord, please come in. Show me the truth. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you resurrected from the dead because you had no sin. Please come into my heart and change me. Change me. And I'm telling you, my friend, if you prayed that prayer and you've been in business with God, you will not be the same. You ain't going to be a perfect man. There was only one like that. But you will not be the same. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. And pray that you would do a work in each and every one of our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. Thank you, brother.